Let's go. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Oh, man, what a crazy week, I guess. Bro, this is the craziest week, man. Okay, man, those that, those that are here to risk management survived this week. Those that did, fucking blew up. So this is the same thing we always say, man. We don't know when the shit comes, but when it comes, you better make sure that you have a safety net on, a seatbelt on, a fucking... So this is how risk management works, guys. You, you, it, most people are not going to use a stop, stop loss, okay? That's just a plain thing. They're lazy, whatever the hell it is. And if you don't have a fucking stop loss, what's going to prevent you from blowing completely up? That's the max daily loss set of the broker level. So all of you guys, I want you guys to call your broker right now, today, after hours, and tell them to set a max daily loss. Even better than that, max daily loss auto liquidation. Imagine you have max daily loss and, you, and you're like, okay, man, I'm going to put maybe $1,000. Let's say you have a $30,000 account, right? And your max daily loss, 1000 bucks. And then you have it, and then you're short DWAC. So you hit your max daily loss. You're like, okay, cool. I can't fucking trade anymore. But you didn't cover it. You held on to that bitch. <laughs> you held on to that bad boy, hoping it called back so that you could trade again because you're a degenerate. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's the bottom line. You're a fucking degenerate. This happens to me too. And like, okay, man, $1,000. Okay, I, I can still got another couple thousand to, before I become a PDT under PDT, right? <laughs> And you hold that shit, bro. And you fucking hold that shit. And you're like, oh shit, I'm down 2,000 now. I'm borderline PDT, right? Now you're not going to trade right, bro, because you're so scared to go under. And, and so, but the thing is, you didn't liquidate yet because the max daily loss doesn't, it doesn't liquidate for you. It just prevents you from adding to a loser. So you're holding that shit. This shit fucking holds up. And now, it fucking hundred dollars a share, and you basically you went from a max day loss of a thousand dollars to completely blowing up your entire account. It happens, guys. Auto liquidate that fucking shit because you know what, man? The moment it hits your max day loss, your dumb ass, your degenerate ass is gonna keep on holding it and praying that it goes back down. Because what the max day loss does is it freezes your account, but it doesn't liquidate you out of that position. The broker will liquidate you out of that position when you're 10% from losing your entire balance or when it makes sense because they are, they are not dumb, but you are dumb. So I tell you all now, every single time a big stock runs, I get messages. Alex gets messages that they blew up. And I'm like, where the fuck is your max daily loss, bro? The worst is they call the broker and they remove the max daily loss. What you need to do is tell the broker at no time should you ever remove it, even if my dumb ass calls you, write a contract or some shit. Because you, you're like a fucking drug addict. You're a crack whore. You would sell your mom out at that point. You're, yeah, it, that's harsh. <laughs> I mean, that's the fucking truth, man. I'm just here trying to save your fucking account, saving your life. Because anybody that removes the max that you lost is going to fucking blow up. And we have a lot of those guys at MIC. And sadly, they did blow up, but they're no longer with us. Consider your account as your fucking life, dude. You want to fucking risk your life? So be it. But think about this. I, I don't know how else to tell you. Stocks like DWAC, fun, all those is a crippler. We call that the crippler. If you don't have good fucking, my max day loss on that fucking account was my entire account, but, but, but it's a small account relative to how much I'm worth. You see what I'm trying to tell you? So the thing is, like, dude, I know myself. I know myself that I'm going to fucking put a million dollars in. I might be in a fucking under the hole for half a million dollars on these stocks. So everybody knows themselves. They put their own max daily loss. I'm a fucking degenerate. Trust me, man. I don't have a max daily loss on some of these accounts because these accounts are small, like 35,000. Well, relatively small, right? I mean, I can fund that anytime, but for some people that is not. So my max daily loss, I do have a max daily loss on that $35,000 account. And I think it's like 10 grand or 12 grand or some shit like that. Okay. Um, but think about this, man. You can, I, I've never though called the broker. I wanted to so bad, trust me. But you know what the broker does for some of me? Because they know me so well, they go, are you going to wire more money back? I go, yes, do not fucking get me out of the position. So I write, <laughs> down, I write down the fucking account to zero, bro. Everybody <laughs> is a degenerate, bro. Everybody is a degenerate, man. And I'm telling you right now, you can have the best discipline in the world. You will have a oh fuck moment, okay? It will fucking come, just like you're the best driver in the world. But you will fucking eventually crash one time, or someone crashes to you. That's the thing that's fucked up with driving and, and also trading. When you're the best driver in the world, 
the crash has not come from you. It's other, other people crashing into you, right? Same thing with fucking trading. There could be a time when you fucking electricity goes out. Like my Wi-Fi went out fucking yesterday, dude, in the middle of a big trade. Or shit just fucking happens, right? Shit like that. I mean, dude, you never know. Or fucking news, bad news come out, you know, you know whatever it may be. And now you just lost your entire life savings because you, you don't do it. So I'm just saying, you know, these are the factors that it may not happen. This is why, this is why you have to layer. We have videos on this, guys, on how to, how to properly take a loss and risk management on that. I call that layering your risk. When you're inside a car, there's a reason why there's a national safety advisory for cars. You're not fucking driving a car without a bumper. You need a fucking bumper. But you know what's in back of the bumper? A, a fucking 5,000 pound engine. Before, and then what happens? This is a, then, then after the engine, there is a fucking um, airbag. And then you, there's three layers of protection. You got a bumper, you have a fucking engine to absorb the crash, and you have a, a, fucking, a fucking airbag. It's not just you have a fucking airbag and you're like Fred Flintstone car, right? And yeah, there's a chassis in between all that. Yeah, seriously. So this is what I call layering your risk. We don't die in a car crash because we layer the fucking risk, okay? There is a fucking giant-ass engine. That's why you have a, a, a front-wheel drive car. Those are the safest because, you know, the giant-ass engine will absorb all of the impact for you, okay? This is the same fucking shit with trading, guys. Having a hard stop is not fucking enough because you can fucking remove your hard stop. Having a max A loss is not good enough because you can call the fucking broker up. Uh, or you can fucking hold on to that loser forever. I'm, hey, Bell, I, can, can I ask you a question about that? I, I'm convinced these days that, you know, traders who don't use a max loss in risk management like we do every single day, even a hard stop, I'm convinced like trading actually is a zero sum game for those traders that don't do risk management because dude, you never know when a KBO is coming, man. Or, or like that one time where Alex was down like hundreds of thousands on dries when it was a lock, dude, like you never know of that one I, day. I, 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 I have to tell you, man, the, the problem is when you keep winning and winning, the one time you lose is when you lose all your money. That's, That's what I mean. That's what I mean, dude. Traders who don't use risk management, this is a zero-sum game. I'm convinced. It will come because what happens is, man, I, 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 grew, a little, I grew a little tiny account for my friend from like tiny to like a, over 100 grand. Yeah. I, I kept on stacking it and I lost half of it in one trade. Dude, I remember that. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know what, man? I got too cocky, whatever. But, you know, it, it comes to a while where it's like driving a fucking car when you're drunk eventually it's going to catch up with you. You got away with it five times. You think you can get away with it a hundred times? No, it's impossible. So the same fucking shit, dude. You fucking, there's two ways to learn. Either by looking at someone else's fucking fuck up and saying, I don't want to be that fuck up guy. And that's why you join MIC because I fucked up. Alex fucked up. All of us fucked up. So <laughs> you have to fuck up. You were learning for the experience. This is the same thing as being a parent. You know, the parents telling you, don't fucking snort crack up your fucking nose. Let me try one time. Let's see what happens, right? <laughs> you got to learn for myself. Yeah, some people don't fucking learn. You have to learn. You can learn by being beat up fucking 10,000 times, right? So, I mean, that, that's, that's the thing, guys. And so, I, this week has been a very volatile week, okay? Those that are surviving, it's like, dude, you need to fight for another day, dude. You know, it's, yeah. we, we, we just can't fucking, you know, I, I'm being jokingly around, but this is fucking serious, guys. I don't want you guys to ever fucking get into that feeling. The feeling of losing money is not because of the money. It's a feeling of worthlessness. Like, how could I be so dumb? How am I going to go and tell my wife? How am I going to tell my kids? I'm, your daddy's a fuck up. Your daddy got greedy. He's up. The guys that fucking lose all their money, guys, are usually guys that, are making money and that's why they think they're invulnerable they're invincible okay guys are losing money is they 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 wrap that they wrap that shit so fucking tight like a virgin's ass right <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's a bad thing oh my too. God. If, if you are too tight you fucking you can stop down on any little move okay so both both extremes are bad okay when you start making fucking money over and over you know man how you make the money is very important are you making the money because you're disciplined to follow your plan or are you making the money because you know, you're, you're fucking adding to a loser and getting bailed out all the fucking time. How many of those guys we see all the time. And yeah, then all, it takes is, all it takes is one motherfucking trade to fucking end your life. And the worst I've been there, man, is not the fucking money. I can go and fucking whore myself to get more money. The, 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 the problem I have is 
the feeling of worthlessness, like how could I do this over and over? Yeah. I am a dumbass. I feel like shit. I want to kill myself because this is the fifth time I blew my fucking account. I have to go fucking tell my kids that they cannot be able to fucking go to Disneyland this year. Shit like that, right? Well, well, Val, you always said it from day one, man, and I've never thought that anything could be truer. Money is so easy to make, but it's the keeping the money that 99% of people just can't figure the fuck out or be disciplined enough to, to do. Unless because you're educated. I, I am telling you, man, how many motherfuckers made money all year to blow up on DWAC? Yeah. And FUN and BKKT, you know, every day, bro, every fucking day. You know, I'm like, dude, I just want you guys never to experience what I felt when I fucking had to go through all that, guys. You know what I'm saying? Even when you have fucking money, the embarrassment of blowing up when, you're not, when, when you know better. You things like that, right, guys? So, I mean, learn if you're not gonna be able to learn from us, you're gonna have to witness it yourself. And I hate for you to witness it yourself. Yo, yo, I'm back. Alex, what's up, brother? Sorry, I just finished a burrito. Yeah, I'm hungry now. <laughs> yeah, I know, now I got food FOMO. <laughs> now, now Val, I gave Val food FOMO instantaneously. <laughs> Big, all I had to say was burrito. I didn't say what was in it. I didn't say uh, anything, bro. Just so said fucking burrito. Now could have just it. eaten and still get food FOMO. <laughs> that's it. So, Tosh, let's go over the watch list, man. You want to pull up the watch list? So let's go. Oh, over let's it. fucking talk about it, man. Absolutely. I have a slide for it, but I'll just pull it. Since you're in here, let's just actually pull hey, it. Hey, Alex, really quick. Any comments on risk management? I hope you heard what I said. I said it the day that DWAC went to 170. I made a video on it, and I said, if you do not have a max size or a max loss at the broker level, you are not allowed to trade. It's that simple. This is what we're talking if, about, guys, this day. If hedge fund traders that are trading $100 million accounts have max size and max loss, why the fuck don't you? Yeah. They have, they have what's called a compliance officer, a risk officer, all this shit watching over your ass with a giant ass yardstick that's going to slap you in the fucking face like a Chinese fucking army, okay? Does she look like Wendy from Billions? Because I'm dead. <laughs> guys, if you cannot can control your fucking self... Have your wife, have your girlfriend, have your kid control you. I, I know traders. Like, man, I love this guy. His Dr. On, he's a one of the moderators. He's the best trader in the world, but he couldn't help himself trading zombies for years, and he lost his ass. And so the final decision was for him to tell his wife to fucking call the broker to make sure that he does not trade after 1030. <laughs> he told the secretary to pull, literally, literally pull out the plug from his computer. That's how generous we <laughs> The reason is because he makes too much fucking money. When you make too much money, money doesn't mean much. But the thing is, over time, it sucks to keep losing, guys. Yeah. So what? do whatever the fuck it takes, okay, to do this shit. Yeah, dude. This BKKT is going up, man, for tomorrow. Yep. That's why it's like, do not touch this shit. 3 p.m. coming, guys. It's best for, you know, uh, some, sometimes I'm telling you, man, it's like, go ahead, Alex. I'll let you do the watch list so we can start going. Yeah, yeah, Tosh, let's, you wanna, let's, let's go through it. Let's go over the watches, Tosh. Okay, let me take off the pivots. All right, let's go through one by one. So GHSI today. Uh, Alex, your watch this. You want to read it out? Yeah, just draw the lines in each area so that they could kind of visualize it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, guys, let me draw these lines. Uh, here, I'll just read it out then. Okay, broken pre-market, ideally a bounce towards 190. So we're going to draw this together as if we're doing this in the morning. 192 yep. and 220. This is, the, yep. this is the lines that Alex said today on the watch list. Yep. And then let me see if I have my chart on that one. Take, take a look at what happened. I think it's this one. Let me double check. Let's see, buddy. So that was my plan. And then this was my chart on that mm -hmm. one. All right. Nice. Nice. So do this. Alex, do this. Do this. How should someone go from reading your watch list? What do they do? Tell the steps. Because a lot of people look at their watches. They don't know what the fuck to do. They just start randomly clicking. Yeah. Right. So what are the steps? You, you cannot, you don't just blindly look at the watch list guys. You have to go through the MIC process. You have to look at the flow. You have to do all these steps. The moment you skip a step because you're lazy is when you get clipped. So tell the process, Alex. So, so imagine you're a trader at MIC, Alex, a new trader. And now what should you do once, once you join and see this watch list? Exactly. Yeah. So the first thing you do when you join is obviously look at the watch list and then you have to go through the process. The process is read the news. Why is this stock moving? Is there a catalyst? Is it a pump? Is it manip whatever it is? Find the catalyst first. After you find the catalyst, look at the flow. 
Is it low flow, medium flow, high flow? I'd say anything under 5 million flow is low float. Uh, anything over 20 million float is a good size flow to be focusing on. Uh, and then um, after that is to look at the chart, look at the daily chart. On the daily chart, is this an uptrending stock? Is it a downtrending stock? Is it a stock that's a reverse split? Is it a SPAC? What is it? What's, what is it, right? And then after that, if you get a little bit more advanced, you can look at the filings and you can look if there's any dilution, like something like PHUN had an ATM offering. So if you go to the video library, so Tosh, you want to go to the video library real quick and type in an ATM so they can Sorry, find bro, out I'm just what writing this means. out for people to literally learn yep. exactly your process. One sec. All right, where am I going? So type in just ATM. That's all you have to do in the search bar. ATM is search. Yep. Let's go. So if you see PHUN had an ATM offering, all you have to do is watch those videos to understand what that means, right? Oh, dude, this was a good one with the Tesla one. That's a really good example. Yep, yep. And then from there, guys, it's a matter of setting your fantasy orders, narrowing it down. And if you look at GHSI, I mean, I got like a DM from a member today that shorted around like 170, 160. And I said, Why, why'd you do that? Oh, I had some FOMO. So if you just basically set your fantasy orders where these lines are, that's the first start. Give me one sec, I'll be right Guys, you understand that we have a process behind this. What Alex is saying is he doesn't just wing it every single day. Obviously, it's years of experience, but you guys can keep trading very simple and learn process within a matter of weeks, literally. And what you're noticing is every single day, it really is an order. Alex has almost the exact order I do it daily. I, I just, the first thing I do is actually chart and then I go to news and catalyst. So I switch one and three, but this is what Alex does, man. What's the catalyst day? Why is the stock up? What's the float? What does the daily chart look like? Is it super broken? Has it been broken for a while? It doesn't look like the freaking Tesla chart hitting 52 week highs and you should probably not short it. Then if you want to go a step further, is there dilution? And is that going to give you an extra confidence based on the fact that they can dilute on their member or on their on their investors in any long? So, and then you draw the lines. So when you guys see a watch list like this. The reason why Alex came up with these lines is everything hits. And this is where this broken stock by the open, this is where he wants to start getting in. And if you notice, this is the scale zone. This is basically what I termed a scale zone. If these are the three lines that he's willing to scale, then yeah, the stopouts are above the 220 line, but this is where he's ready to go. And the this reason why that stock was so much better than anything else is because it was already broken pre-market and made it move pre-market. All we had to do is just wait for a bounce. If it bounced, we had a trade. If it didn't bounce, we didn't get a trade. That's it. Exactly, bro. So let's move to the next one, Tosh. That's, that's the first one. So, okay, so, so, so that's one. That, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the just first the trade. first one, guys. So let's go next. So that was a one for one. Let's go to CXDC. And let's and draw let's the lines again, baby. Draw Ideally, lines again. Uh, so this one's broken. Ideally, 140, 160, 180. So let's draw together. Okay, 140. We one... have videos on all these steps, guys. When people ask us, hey, there's a thousand videos. Uh, should I watch them all? Well, you watch the main ones, which, which, gives you, uh, qu which gives you questions so that you can drill in. So now you're like, oh, what's a line? So you, you, you watch the videos, how to draw lines. Definitely. Alex, do you have your chart for that one that you want to post? Uh, I actually didn't trade that one. I actually missed it because I was oh, actually. Oh, got it. Okay. Which one, Al, uh, which one, Tosh? This one was uh, the this one was CDXC. CXDC. Oh, C C CXDC. Sorry. I'm oh, okay. I tried that one. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. So that one, Tosh, if you look at it again, that one was a rejection of 160. So if you scaled in 140, 160, you would have had a 150 average. Stock is trading at one dollar right now, you know. Bro, look at look at what yeah, I remember. Jay Trigger did, and all he did was follow the watch list this morning. Look at this, guys. So this is uh, nice, the only, Jay Trigger. So check out. This is the only stock I lost today. Let me show you how to make it. Yeah. Because okay? uh, so I, I I was very early. So the problem I got was CXCC. This happens a lot. Okay. I I I I I asked why did it move up, and everyone's like, oh, well, this is a scam. It's supposed to be delisted. You know, the only reason they're up is because they're they're <laughs> trying to keep their registration. So what what happened was it fed into my brain. Like I normally would not short so early, but I'm like, I don't want to miss this shit. I don't want to miss this shit, oh, right? Oh no. And so so what I did was I scaled. Notice I started scaling way too early, and then it halted up two times. Okay, the moment it halted up two times, I'm like, dude, what am I going to do? 
I'm going to eat my loss the moment it comes back down so I can break even on it, right? So breaking even is better. Because like, I, I, in my head, like, wait, when, when you're like, what the fuck is going on? I hold it twice. And then you look at all the other stocks. The other stocks have went up by 500%, right? And this is a Discord chat room pump as well. And so I completely fucked the trade. So let's go back to the watch list. So let's see the watch list, Tosh. One sec. Yeah, and, and if you guys notice, what do we talk about is the only time Bao ever loses is when he gets fucking greedy. And he got greedy on this one. Right? It yeah. happens, man. We are human, bro. We are not fucking robots, bro. It doesn't matter if you are a trillionaire. There are still going to be times where your judgment is lapsed. There's going to be times where you get... Let me post the watch list. <laughs> uh, we can see this. Let me see. So that you don't have to switch back and forth. Um, yeah, here, I'm going to post it. Right oh, right thanks, Bao. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, I'll just stay in the... Perfect. Thank you, buddy. Okay. So CXUC. Nice. Nice. Okay. Awesome. You know what happened? I disregarded fucking Alex. I, I did do out 40. So I, but the problem is I oversized. So 140, 160, the difference between 140 to 180 is huge, guys. Fucking 40 cents. That's a lot of fucking money percentage, right? A 40 right. cents on a dollar stock is like fucking 40%, guys. And so the way, so I'm going to tell you how to read these watch lists. Because a lot of you guys make, make the mistake as I did too. Okay, I'm going to load the fuck in at 140. Yep. Oh, fuck. It's now 160, 170. <laughs> and I'm stopping out. That's exactly what happened to me. I, 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 I started to scale in way too early, way too fucking heavy because I'm hearing this thing is a fucking junk. And so, so when you're reading Alex's thing, he's putting three areas. That's when you look at it and you go, okay, how much size do I want to get on the stock? And let's do the math to properly scale so that it does not run me over the moment 180 comes, guys. And remember, this is still front fucking side, okay? Use your 30% rule if you have to to keep yourself safe, whatever the fuck it may be, and then add to a winner. Because what happened was, look at me, man. I did a classic newbie move. I was so fucking FOMO. I didn't want to miss this stock because I thought I missed it, you know? And so I started scaling in. I'm like, oh, fuck. The moment it hit 180, I'm like shitting myself because I'm in buckets of this shit, right? Yeah. And so, so the way a newbie trader, like if they see this, they, I'm telling you, man, you start at 140 and you're all in, you're out the top. And you're like, what the fuck, man? This watch list is a piece of shit. But no, <laughs> but look at the watch list. What the watch list is, there's three lines of major resistances that you need to account for, account for, okay? So, so this is part of the risk management. A watch list is just gives you... Remember, this watch list was created like an hour before the open, right? And so there's no fucking way we know what the fuck it will be. But it's a guideline to show you where the major resistances are. But you still have to do your own risk management and not fucking get in too early. So in this case, so this is a good case, man, because we don't usually lose on this shit. But uh, I lost because I got FOMO just like everybody else. And I'm like, yeah. the moment 180 came, I'm like, dude, I cannot add anymore. I'm not going to hold. I just want to break even. So I got broke even. I'm so happy I broke even. Okay. Whereas if I had slowly scaled and waited for 140 and added my small size and then, and then add to a confirmation, I would be fucking heaven. But I did not. I blew my wad way too early. So that's how when you see these three areas, because we, we, we often don't talk about, we tell, oh, the watch is good. But, but learning how to properly position it, your your position your trades is a, a key positioning your trade and risk management of your position size don't oversize way too fast i see too many people oversize way too fast and then the, and then the real resistance comes they they stop out yep that's spot on Val. that is 100 spot on and look at his syta running for tomorrow it, it, let's see that syta Nice, nice. And Bell, let this me, is where let me, the money is flowing, guys. Let me, let me add something to that. Guys, you notice how Jay Trigger was one of our members who posted his. He waited for the outer lines. And then also J1972. Like, guys, these are the members that, like, arguably are a group of some of our most dedicated members. I see these two individuals in every freaking webinar we put on. And guess what? Their charts are better than ours. This is the point, man. The people that put in the work understand, follow the watch list, wait their patience, wait for the dis, you know, exercise discipline within their process. These are the results, man. I see charts like this daily from these individuals because they're working at it. They're <laughs> watching every bit of our content. There's no excuses, man. They're here learning and look yep. at the results. Yep. So I love it, dude. I, I love to see our members really putting in the time, man. So that's Let's the point. The that uh, Bao made a. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm still a little bit sick, but Bao made a very good point about scaling. So if you see three levels on a chart and let's say your max size is a thousand shares and you're going to use the 30% rule and you see three lines. 
So if 30% of that is 300 shares, so you should break up your order into 100 share, 100 share, 100 share. And then if there's a confirmation, and then you could add. So keep that in mind, guys. These are the levels that I'm scaling into. I never go one shot, one kill. I, impossible, impossible to go one shot, one kill. But if I leave this room and I plan the trade, I plan my size accordingly to be able to get to those levels. Well, because yep. shit, man, if it was one shot, one kill, Alex would just say, hey, guys, guess what? The line's 150 and you need nothing else than that. Yeah, then throw 10,000 shares. But how do you know? It's a not, skill zone. Saying is not an exact science. Exactly. Impossible. If it was exact science, stock market wouldn't exist. That's the point. There's inefficiencies, you know? Dude, 1,000%. Perfectly said. Now anyway, let's go to Tosh, go to the next one, bro. So now we have PHUN guys, Alex said 550 and six are the rejections for short. So let's, let's, let's actually type these out. So let me zoom in really quick. So we had and, while, and while Tosh is drawing these lines, I want to explain my trade thesis for PHUN. <laughs> so PHUN guys was a sympathy play to DWAC already because the sympathy play is not as strong as the main one. Yesterday they had an offering. This is an ATM offering, which means they could sell shares on the open market. The only way they could sell shares, because a large offering is they need volume. Without volume, they cannot sell the shares. So today we got a pump PR out of the stock. So you have the day before they have an offering, the day after they have a pump PR, and the thing is bouncing to half dollar resistance. To me, this was a no brainer short, but I fucked it up because I didn't use size on it. I was kind of scared on it a little bit. Uh, but that, that was the trade thesis. The trade thesis was short the sympathy play on a bounce based on them selling into their PR. And what were the lines, Tosh? 550 and six. Dude, 550 and six. So if you use that skill zone to at least get starters, brother, look at how much you were in the money by the time this hit. Not only right here in the first jump in the immediate morning, but it also had another one. But you, this is during zombie hour. So this is arguably like, you, I wouldn't necessarily count this one off the bat, but this is it, dude. That's where the money's made. Yep. That's it. It's as simple as that. Nail and bail. You need one or two of those a day to have a great career yep. uh, and then dude the best one of all day is dwac bro yep so go Let's, draw the lines right at the open so you can see exactly what happened because now it's kind of squeezing alex do you want to do you want to talk about range as per drawing lines because notice how guys how this one is 65 to 70 versus like 140 180 yeah. you want to talk about range real so quick? obviously dwac guys fucking move from 170 down to 50 so there's so much range on this stock so there's opportunities to make money the problem is if you are oversized, you will be dead. Oftentimes, guys, what, you'll, what you're going to learn or what we try to teach you guys is the less size you have, the more money you can make because you are allowing the trade to work. I see oftentimes people short stocks at like $5 and they stop out at 505 And that's because they're scared, they're oversized. If you do not give your stocks room to breathe, then you probably are in too big. Correct. So this was the morning, guys. Uh, Alex wrote 65, 65, 68, 70 are the lines to short looking to add when 61 breaks because that's how you know it's really weak. So actually, let me put another line. Uh, it's 61. One second. Hold on a second. Dude, there's, there's so much range, it's hard to actually draw the line. <laughs> and pre-market, it, it hits. As I can. Pre-market, bro, it has 65 perfectly, bro. Literally to the letter. Perfect. Because you got to understand, guys, by about this time, Alex is doing his watches by like this time. So when you zoom out and, all, and you're like, oh, it didn't necessarily hit intraday. It did right there in pre-market. And, that, and that's what we're talking about. The, the, this was already pre- And that 61 break is where I added and I got out around 57, 58 or something like that. So there was still money to be made, guys. It's just- Hell yeah. You need to be able to plan these trades. That's that's the big key, man. The key is these these stocks and and it, notice the stocks I'm trading short, um, PHUN and DWAC. They're stocks that already topped out three four days ago, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's stocks that are already done. Price discovery is done. They already figure out what price it is, and I will fucking. I will, I don't know what you, I don't even know what to do, but if this fucking DWAC goes back to 175, I'll fucking give away my Lambo. That's, that's how much I believe in the fact that once these stocks top out guys, they're not fucking coming back. 
Sure, it might bounce 70, 80, 90, 100, maybe even 120, but there are so many people stuck long. All the shorts are out. So now the trade is over, and now they're getting burned on SYTA. They're getting burned on BKKT, you know? And bro, tomorrow, when everyone is focused on SYTA, I'm going to be back on fun. I'm going to be back on DWAC because people don't give a shit anymore. Alex, in the last eight years of our trading always, career, when is we always use your stops? Shit happens. There's, you know, that's my point. Okay. So Alex is right. There's a, there's 90 something percent chance he's never happened, but you know what, man, I, for some reason in trading that 1% always hits us, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> always us, bro. Always us. No one else, bro. Yeah. Right. So you gotta be careful guys. That's my point to you. You trade the probability, but never disregard risk management. Never fucking, you know, you always have to fucking have an oh shit, let me get out before I die. And that's your max that you lost. And also keep this in mind as well. I got, so we got DMs from all types of numbers, right? We got DMs from people that are making money, losing money, whatever it is. And for the people that are making money right now, for the people that are doing well, do not fucking sit and keep that in your uh, trading account. Pull that money out, put it into your bank account and save it for a rainy day. You don't know, God forbid, when another bad situation is going to come. So have some dried powder into your bank account from when you traded well in case there is a rainy day. So I recommend if you made money this week, doesn't matter if it's a thousand, doesn't matter if it's a hundred, pull some money out, make it real. That way you are not emotional and over trading and God forbid something bad happens. You get to pull the money out this week. I'm up. I think God, bro, like, Maybe 150K I'm up this week. 140K of that has been wired to my bank account just in case I become an idiot and start to fucking gamble. Because I, again, admit that I am human and I am flawed. So to protect myself from flaws, I'm pulling out my own cord of having extra money in my account. Alex, wire out some for a lifetime membership. I'll hook you up with a nice price. Or why are also, bro, take your fucking kid out to the movies, bro. Go take your wife out for a steak dinner. Go take the side chick out, bro. <laughs> take the side chick. Guys, guys, always relate your money back to fucking the reality, man. I'm telling you right now because, you know what? You don't know how much fucking money really is until you fucking see it in person and how much you can buy with it. I'm trying to save $20 on a coupon code the other day, trying to buy a chair and trying to save $200. Yeah, this motherfucker bows buying a $2,000 chair. <laughs> He's looking for a coupon code $20 off. You know, shit like that. So in real life, in reality, in real life, there's a lot of fucking money. And so we, Alex, me and you just talk about this, right? We, we know a trader that fucking is up like $500,000 and never took a single penny out and then fucking blew it on one trade. Shit like that, man. True I mean, story, man. True happened. story. I know a guy. Go ahead. $500,000 P&L. One day, gone. And you know why? No max size. No max loss. No wire out. Shocker. Shocker. I it's, promise, it's, guys. It's, it's I swear, weird, God, bro. You guys are gonna do it, bro. You guys could do it. I promise, you could do it. Just put the seatbelt on, man. I'm not driving my car 150 miles an hour with my seatbelt off. I'm not doing it. So why are you doing that in trading? If you think he's kidding, he took me 150 in a Lambo this last week, and I'm gonna shit my fucking pants, dude. That was in Mexico, bro. Nowhere in the United States. <laughs> dude, we ain't bullshitting. But that's the thing, man. This is the this is sure we're showcasing the watches today, but I mean, bro, fucking one hundred percent win rate. I want to see everyone make money today, bro. Everyone make money because Correct. there's usually the watches statistically is ninety percent win rate. It's still a good number, but it's not very often. It's one hundred percent where everything to the fucking T worked, and if everything worked, bro, today was the day to make your money to wire it out. To fucking enjoy your life because finally the work that you're putting in is working. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Now you, know, you ordered that burrito yet? Nah, dude. It's almost time to the market's almost closed. I'm gonna go out and eat something. Dude, it, it, guys, it's as Bow always says, man. Everybody asks where Lambo, but nobody asks how to get Lambo, dude. Or I'm when Lambo. <laughs> You know, I'm telling you, man, it's like, fuck your Lambo. Uh, drive your fucking Honda Accord until you can fucking, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but how like Lambo, how he still drives a Honda Accord after he has a Lambo. We, we guys, we are showing you how Lambo right now. Okay. Yeah, Watch yeah. fucking this MIC process. 
Okay, we we this this is you know I've gone to the point where I'm so fucking upset. That's why I'm screaming at everybody for risk management, and I'm I'm actually go, having Alex tell you guys how to use the watch list because a lot of times we take for oh shit. Alex, you still in DWAC? I'm still in uh, AGRI, dude. No, I got out, bro. Wait, Val, what are you what are you in? I'm still in AGRI. AG, AGRI? Yo, let's do this, oh, guys. Shit. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two things. I want to do two things, man. Number one is I want to do this. If you are a brand new person or you're in the MIC and you want to upgrade, Tosh, let's do 25% off the annual, 25% off the lifetime. And if you are an existing member and you could post proof in after hours that you guys set up a max size and max loss today, I'll fucking send you guys MIC shirts. Whoever, how many it is, I'll do the first 50 people. First 50 people will lose. Let's do the first 10, man. Fuck it. Do the first yeah. 10. I don't want to put you in the middle. Anything. First 20. Hold on, yeah. hold on, Alex. Let me make sure I'm understanding you right. 25% off annual lifetime for today, non-members and members. But if you're a member who can prove that you obeyed your risk management today on top of that, you get that discount and a free you, shirt. You prove, you prove that you set up your max size and max loss at your broker. Post a screenshot of it. And the first 20, uh, 25 people or first 20 people to do it, We'll send you MIC clothing, whatever you want. It's funny. This guy's like, we're giving you all free shit. What kind is it? <laughs> it's a free shirt, bro. Take what we give you. <laughs> it's crazy because I got to bribe you motherfuckers these days. It's crazy, man. Here, it's like, here's some free shit that, that we're doing for you because you should, you, you're too stupid to do for yourself. <laughs> it's 25% off for everyone. If you're upgrading, whatever it is. I'm telling you, man, this, this is a society we live in, guys. So when I get to America, I'm an immigrant. I'm a fucking Asian immigrant. Our parents whoop our fucking ass. And this concept of having an allowance because you're doing your chores, it's just like, what the fuck? If I don't do my chores, I get fucking, fucking hit over the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> Americans, are getting, dude. Americans are getting paid to do chores? The moment I told my mom, fuck, I have a fucking five-finger fucking slap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait, you're getting money to all his white friends? I mean, this is a sort of fucking shit that I, I'm like, dude, Alex is fucking nice. Alex is fucking nice. But you know what, man? If, if we have to pay you to do the right thing, I mean, I don't know what to tell you over the long run. That's because we love our members, guys. And that's why I said, Alex, don't do 50, do 10. He did 20, okay, guys? But this <laughs> no, is you know you. what's so funny about that, dude? Every one of my white friends growing up all got paid for their chores, but only my white friends and <laughs> some of my other friends were like, dude, what the fuck? You get paid? <laughs> Seriously, like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, I told my mom, like, hey, where's my money? <laughs> She's like, oh, bitch. Seriously, dude. Bitch, you got food. <laughs> I, pay, I pay you in fucking food. <laughs> bro, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I literally got paid as, as like an eight-year-old to do my chores, bro, and I get $5 a week to go buy a pack of Pokemon cards in 1999, which I wish to God I saved to this day, dude, because I'd probably be sitting on freaking millions in Pokemon cards. Yep. So hey, guys, yeah. post it in after hours, and I'm going to tell Oliver to reach out to you guys. Yeah, guys, post in after hours about the shirt. Uh, but if somebody wants to upgrade or somebody wants to join on annual lifetime, which are our only two options, please don't ask about a monthly. We don't have a monthly anymore. We want quality. We don't want quantity. A hundred dollars is going to do nothing for MIC. We need dedicated members who want to put in the time you haven't, and learn. If you haven't seen by now, dude. It's, the money doesn't matter to Alex. Look at this dude, he's giving out free shit because, so the point is guys, guys, we, we want you to, to, to fucking do the right thing. And if you cannot do the right thing, you will fucking blow up. You will fucking leave MIC, not because we kick you out, because you have no choice but to leave, okay guys? And so I don't know how else, to, if this week, if these past two weeks, DKKT, DWAC, fun, all these stocks that blew people up, if, if, you, if you fucking don't see it, there'll be a day where the crippler comes for you. Okay. Same thing on the long side, guys. We tell each other all the time, dude, what the fuck? We, we tell you these lines so that if you are long, okay, so, so do this. We, we, we don't talk long too much, Alex. So how do they use longs on your watch list? You want to talk about that? Yeah. So the big thing is me and Bao have a very good habit of knowing which stocks to avoid as shorts. So we mentioned stocks are avoid for shorts. That doesn't mean automatically go long. It means look at those stocks for potential movers in case it's zombies or whatever it is. So stocks I am looking to avoid short are the stocks that you should be looking to go long. 
like Alex, this was, this was a really good example this morning when it was front side. And then you talk about how you'd adjust the plan later if it came to it. But in the beginning, this was a strong stock until it proved by the open it wasn't and then didn't become a long. But this is the shit that we're talking about, guys. When things are really strong pre-market, these are the things to focus on on a general basis on the long side. So right. we post exactly for longs and shorts, but you have to notice right now this week, we're in a market where shorts are winning, dude, because there are not ideal long setups with all these broken ass stocks in backside. So again, so there's weeks where we're, everything's along. But let me talk to you how to fucking read this if you're long. So we're reading Alex's watch list today. It says K-A-V-L is the hot chick. Look at the time that he posted that. Okay? Yeah, it was 9 a.m. Dude, you're, you're, you're fucking dude. You're going to get killed. So what I did was this guys. So if you're a long buy shirt, sure, I'm a lot, I'm a, I was shorting this. Okay. The reason I shorted because I looked at the filings. I saw that there's a dilution on it. There's a shelf that's being sold, but just because there's a filing that says there's a shelf being sold, doesn't mean they have to sell it. Right. So you have to be careful. Number one. So the moment, if you are a long buy shirt, sure, fine, you know, shit happens, you lose. But you have to know when to get the fuck out. Just because it's a hot chick right now doesn't mean it's going to be a hot chick forever. Hot chicks turn to ugly chicks very fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I was like, like, dude, last year I was a pretty hot guy. I was working out and shit. Look at me now, bro. This, I was a fast month, right? This, so, is, this is the definition of a hot chick becoming a side ugly chick that nobody wants to pay attention to. But I know that sounds harsh, oh, but the point so is, guys. Look at the VWAP, guys. We talk about this all the time, okay? Yep. The, moment the, the, the moment a hot chick gets broken, the chart becomes broken. It is no longer a hot chick. You have to fucking understand. You need to get the fuck out. This is where predefining your risk before you enter comes into play. Same thing with shorting. A broken stock that gets VWAP reclaimed is no longer a broken stock. That's Correct. how people blow up. They think that just because a stock is broken that it cannot fucking go back up. Fuck no. Just because a stock is way over VWAP, take a look at this shit. AGRI. Pull up AGRI. Tosh. A G R I. This shit was the hottest of the hot. This shit was a fucking bombshell. See that? <laughs> she fucking got rabies and shit. <laughs> How the fuck do you come up with this shit, dude? Dude, seriously. So this rabies bitch, I just fuck. No, I was. <laughs> all right, I was like, all right, wait a second. Right. I think it's I took her to the back and put her out of her misery. Jeez, dude. You didn't even give her a I chance. Am covered, I am all covered AGRI. <laughs> this hot chick, I was... Dude, the thing is, like, you know, man, we talked about this. Why, if you want to learn why I was so aggressive to short this AGRI, I posted it play by play in main chat, guys. Get into fucking main chat and read this shit. Because I'll be fucking lazy. Today, oh, it looks like you gave this rabies. Huge example, K-A-V-L-A-G-R-I. Huge examples of hot chicks turning into <laughs> the rabies chick, right? <laughs> the, rabies oh, chick. the moment there's a death candle, guys, that's game over. Look at the A-G-R-I chart. There's a huge death candle. Never look back. This is Tosh's favorite signal to enter the short. The two ones are here. The two under here, either a candle like this, and specifically if you just have a drop this big, for God's sakes, by the time it pumps back, and but then right that here, dude. Wait, that was too early. That's the thing. Dude, but right – no, no, no. But I'm saying, like, I'm saying, Val, when this sets up to short where you did right yeah. here, not only did you have an earlier death candle and a major $2 plus drop, when it does this death candle near zombie hour, dude, this is the start of an unwind time. Like, this is it. So Taj, let me talk about my plan for tomorrow while we have everyone. I want to talk about it very quickly. Is... Alice, can I can I say one last thing about KAVL? Because we didn't mention this. Go for it, Dude, go. if you go to the main trading chat, guys, on 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 um on Alex's commentary earlier, dude, he was waiting for a pop to VWAP on this once it was broken. So yeah, we thought it was the hot chick, but by the time it proved by market open that it wasn't. Bro, this thing just didn't pop after this reject, but we were looking for pops to VWAP. So like the, the proof is in the fucking pudding, dude. Like, so I just wanted to say that one as well. Oh my God, Val. Dude, I just joined that fucker. <laughs> dude, nail the coffin shut, why don't I you? Out, I call that old yellow. You remember that movie, Old Yellow? Yeah, I do. Put it out of its misery. <laughs> like a fucking Christmas tree, bro. Dude, as long as the red is over the green, I'm, I'm making money, right? That lit up the whole Christmas street, dude. Dude, dude, that's sick.
that was really cool. I went, the thing is, dude, I, this was a long, notice that, dude. The, I, I did a long, I sold all the way long on top, then I shorted the top. And the oh, that is. Oh, these are yep. long. Nice. Yep. Dude, dude. I long, oh, this is the thing I'm learning, guys. I'm telling you right now, me and Alex is always talking about avoid, avoid, do not touch this shit. It's a hot chick. I'm thinking, fuck, man, if I had a dollar for every time that, that Alex and I warned about hot chick oh, and we don't man. touch it, I'd be rich. Well, I started to fucking go long whenever Alex warns. So Alex is warning as a fucking hot chick. I'm fucking long. And then I realized it blew out uh, all the fucking longs. And so I switched over to short. So uh, noticing that, you, you know, you can make money both ways. I wanted to show the members that, you know, we are not just uh, short bias, guys. You use the watch list to learn how to fucking go long as well as short. Uh, knowledge of where short sellers are selling, like Alex, helps you to know not to be greedy if you're a long bias trader. If you're a long bias trader and that, that area, that line of area of interest comes, you better be reducing, guys. Stop being fucking greedy. Reduce those fucking areas of interest, which is the resistance. Hell Look at yeah. this IRNT chart, pal. IRNT. Let me take a look at that for tomorrow. Another thing setting up with a lot of range. My charts today? Guys, I fucking distort. I do. My charts were like beautiful today, man. Holy shit. Let me show you some of the other shit I did. That uh, ART. Time for bow porn. <laughs> so, so, what time is it? 3 30. Uh, this thing's already up. So, another trick I like to see is find. Find strong stocks to go long. I've been making money going long at 3.30. These are time-based rules that we do too, guys. There's many ways to make money as a long. As a long, you have to understand where your edge is. Your edge is when the stock is over VWAP, when the shorts are trapped, not when the fucking shit breaks down. When the shit breaks down, don't touch it. You, your job now is done. Same thing with shorts. So I'm starting to go long before I go short. This is why it keeps me out of trouble, right? So you notice that I actually went fucking long in ATI. Who knew it, right? <laughs> now, so, I'm, I, now I'm looking to get in the NFT market. Can you mint this as an NFT so I can buy it? <laughs> dude, that's, you know, that, that, so it's kind of like, dude, sometimes you feel good. And so it's just the thing that with trading, guys, the markets adapt. You have to learn. I, I still learn new shit every fucking day, guys. I'm not sitting here thinking I'm the best trader in the fucking world. I'm definitely not. <laughs> You know, so there's lots of fucking room for improvement for everybody. The markets right. change sentiment all the time. But one moment, it's like, fuck, anything you short, you're dead. The next moment, anything you long, you're dead. Yep. So the one thing that works in every single market is to wait for your outer fucking lines. If you are a long bias trader, guys, if you're a long bias trader, don't fuck with shit under VWAP. If you are a short bias trader, wait for the top to be completely formed before you even attempt to short. It's, bro, guys, you got to take notes on this shit, bro. It's like, it's, I mean, there's no one, there's really nothing else out there where you have two multi-millionaire day traders literally, literally giving you away everything that took them or took us fucking shitloads of money to lose, bro. Like, fuck, bro. It's, it's crazy how much money we lost to get to this point. And it's just very discouraging when we give you all this advice and no one listens. So please, guys. Listen to the rules, join fucking MIC, use the watch list, use the resources, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change your life, man. Alex, did you well, want to talk about things learning. setting up for guys, more? I, I even learn from members, guys. Members help each other. Okay? I see so many crazy-ass long charts from all these guys, Harry, Christopher Lee, all these guys that Alex and I says, man, why, we're stupid, Alex. Why don't we go long? So, yeah. you know um, – you don't have to go both sides. My point being is, guys, they're using this knowledge helps you, protect you from either side. And I'm telling you guys right now, guys, there's a lot of guys are too comfortable not trying to learn new things. When when things are slow, start to learn new things. Because the old, if you only have one fucking trick in the book, if you know, if you're the master of the fucking hammer, and then there's no nails to the hammer, and then when you're fucking, you're sitting around doing shit. So, you know, learn to be the hammer and the nail. <laughs> Yep. Oh yeah. Cool, man. I think that's it. That's it. Guys, join MIC. You use the discount. You'll make back the money using the watch list. I mean, oh, the plan for tomorrow. Plan for okay, okay. Good. Plan for tomorrow, guys, is what stocks are moving today? PHUN 530, 550, 560 line tomorrow. DWAC 70. 73 and maybe 75 line. Uh, BKKT, ideally we get a gap up to 35. 
But if not, I will watch rejections towards 30. IRMT hopefully goes to the moon and takes attention off my plays. AGRI, 455 bucks. I, I, I hate doing this. There's no reason to tell us now, Alex. Everybody does the nightly scam bullshit. We do this an hour before the open. So yeah. come back an hour, watch our watch list because all these things we tell you, man, if you're writing this shit down, things may change tomorrow. Yep. Yap up or down and these lines will change. Yep. Let's see what happens, man. So I think that's it for me, guys. I'm going nice to... <laughs> I've been feeling under the weather lately, so... I'll yeah, it's better, Alex. Like, Great job training. Go this down, brother. You know what, Alex and I, I mean, it, it, when, I, I'm going to give mad props to Alex. Just when you think you, that he cannot level up, he just leveled up to another level, guys. And this is what training is about. It's experience, man. Uh, soon he's been an old guy like me. He'd be screaming as well. So congratulations, Alex. I appreciate I, it, man. I saw I you level it. up. I saw you level up big time. You know, I've seen members level up big time, man. That's why we're promoting everybody that we see. Yeah, to to your moderator and moderate guys. So keep it up, guys. Don't 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 get frustrated. That that if you if you lose, you you know the reason. You fucked up because of discipline. Don't make any excuses. And and like I keep telling you guys, man, um, one time is a mistake. Second time is a fucking choice, guys. Third time is a habit, right? So it's up to fucking you whether or not you want to succeed or not. We're not. I mean, there's two thousand people here. I wish I could help everybody. Uh, don't be. You know, we. <laughs> You ought to help yourself, and that's why tap. Get a fucking tap. Get a tap. Get a tap. Get a tap. Oh yeah. Yep. All right. Now we get any questions, man. Guys, any questions? Thanks, Alex. See you, buddy. Good job, Alex. Questions, questions, questions. A couple more minutes, guys. We have in this webinar. Any questions about signing up or prices or discounts or anything like that, guys? Just text my line two one three four five eight five nine nine seven. Uh, but when it comes to trading or you know talking to me and Val right now about um, anything else, uh, ask away. <clears throat> nice, man. Um, one of our moderators just said, Steve, uh, our uh, cop said, MIC changed my life for sure. I'm nowhere as good as Bow and Alex, but the supplemental income I make now is life-changing. I love hearing uh, stuff like that, man. Love you, Steve. He's, you know, man, he's a moderator, man. We've seen him grow. Big time. Congrats, Steve. I fucking love it, man. I see, I see him <laughs> get really excited about one of the trades this week. I was just joking, like it's off topic, but you know what, man? <laughs> uh, here, I'm going to post a comment right now. This is a fucking amazing comment. Thanks, Steve. There's a lot of people out there, guys, that I'm telling you, man, if you stick with this and you humble yourself, Steve's fucking awesome. And he's one of the most humble and helpful guys. So. Dude, Vic's always been like one of my favorite from day ones, man. It's because this guy not only has a normal job, does not complain, does not whine. When he loses, he reassesses. And when he does good, he inundates himself and tries to focus on getting better. Goes to his normal job, is not quitting, nothing like that. Comes, kills it in the morning, then goes and does his job. Dude, I just, this guy is, man, just a model citizen for this, dude. I'm telling dude, you. Someone, someone asked him, man, I hate, I hate these questions. How do you, what's the best way to scream for shorts? You're not even asking the right question. You, you don't even know how to short. You should ask how, what's the best strategy to short? You, you, you're, if you know the best strategy for shorting, you don't need to ask, how do I screen for shorts? You see the difference? It's like, where's Lambo? You should need to ask how Lambo. I, I tell you that the ticker is to short. You're going to blow up unless you know the strategy. So the first thing you got to learn, guys, there's a lot of these questions that you are trying to run before you even learn how to crawl. Learn how to fucking crawl and then walk and then jog. Running, you go, you, you're asking for runner questions when you're a fucking infant, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with no well, legs. So, well, it, ba ba it's like, it's like saying, how do I get lessons to be an Olympic gold medalist? And you're not, you've like never ran in your life. It's like, dude, why don't you focus on just running? Like you guys have to understand if you go to the watch list section, anything that's not on this list, which is basically a scanner for you, why the fuck are you trading it if we're not? Like, dude, the veterans are trading four or five tickers. If you're trying to find something that's magically not on this list because you think you could trade it or do better than veterans, like, good luck to you, but you're just going to blow the fuck up, dude. I'm sorry, man. We have to be really blunt about this matter because, like, why would you pay for a scanner? Why? It's like people who pay for porn. It's free, dude. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a terrible example, but like it just doesn't make sense, bro. It doesn't make sense. Yep, keep asking questions, guys. Uh, I'm in a good mood today, thank thankfully. I'm hungry as fuck, though, so 
<laughs> Hearing burrito fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. I got all this food FOMO. I got to go eat now. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, this is your opportunity to ask because I'm a very generous offering mood. <laughs> to, oh, to no. <laughs> I was about to like throw Wago in all your faces or something. <laughs> I'm about to give away the secrets and shit, you know? I hate just fucking because um, but you know, man, I'm a, I'm a good hangry individual today. <laughs> Dude, this is one of the best comments I've ever seen. Michael Tran goes basically. I'm paraphrasing, but he goes, everybody asks, "Where's Lambo?" He goes, "Where's Honda?" Is the reality. <laughs> Yup. You should, before you ask Labo, dude, dude, your first car ain't gonna be a fucking Labo. Where's the bus stop? More likely, right? dude, you guys need to stop at this where Lambo and just ask where's, where's Kia. Bus stop? Where's bus stop? <laughs> <laughs> After you've been trading for a year or two, then you can ask where and how Lambo. Fuck that, dude. All right, so everybody hey, asks where guy, Lambo, but nobody asks where's Hyundai. Where's this guy? <laughs> where's my diaper? <laughs> you guys are ridiculous, man. Uh, oh, remember, shit. guys, remember today's hot chick. Once they break down, becomes tomorrow's low hanging fruit. Definitely if you like this, like AGRI. So I'm going to tell you the secret of short selling. The secret of short selling is avoid day one shit. Avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid it. So like uh, the way I told Tosh, man, I taught Tosh the secret. Which he's the first person I taught the low hanging fruit to. Um, remember, you're struggling. So I mean, it work. I mean, dude, the most safe play is a low hanging fruit, which is the continuation breakdown. We always say that. Okay. Yep. People like to play with a shiny object and that's how you get killed guys. Do not go for the hot chick. We call it the hot chick, but that's basically, you know, that that's our, our non PC way of saying the hot play. Right. So, so if you're a long buyer, share simple, keep it simple. Stop buying shit on the VWAP. If you're a short seller, stop shorting shit over VWAP. How simple yeah, is Seriously. Right? Fuck, dude. Um, low hanging fruit means the stock is dead. It's like, dude, I call it low hanging fruit because it's the easiest shit. You walk around, you pick the fruit up all day long. But sometimes the fruit is not there, but you don't lose money. You look at, if you go back and take a look at it, all the plays that you've blown up on, it's usually day one low floater. Day one low floater. If you take a look, if you're a long bias trader, you lose because you're fucking adding the loser under VWAP. It's true. It's true. Keep it simple. Keep Just, it simple. Dude, think, think about it, guys. What, like when, you know, the traders that do this, where they long right here on a stock like this, that's way under VWAP and broken because it's quote unquote on sale. It's like the worst thing you can do. This would be like shorting, you know, um, here, I'll just go back to DWAC. This would be like the equivalent of going back to the 30 day chart when it ran and being like, hey, let's short this right here. You know, like, it's just ridiculous, dude. You, you don't want to fight trend because it's the number one way to lose, man. If something is completely hot, you know, hot chick front side, why are you shorting? And if something's completely broken, like KABL or these dead low, you know, dead cat bounce, low pumps that are just in backside, hey, it's uh, just a curve hey, to lose. Hey, Roland, Roland, are you on a mic? Because I saw Roland post a nice gain, and I love the fact that he, he, he said that he blew up four times. Oh, shit. Wow, I didn't and, know that, Roland. I think, he, I think he made like 40 grand the other day or some shit. So yeah, I, wanna, I, saw, I saw a really big p and was really I cool. I want him to talk through that trade because this is a great motivation for other individuals. So, Roland, you want to get on if you have a mic? Is there a dialing number, Taj? What's the deal? Yeah, it, no pressure, Roland, but we'd love to have you on if, if you're here, man. Uh, now nah, we're going to get <laughs> – <laughs> oh, you got to get one. Okay, he's got to get a mic. So next time, brother, next time. Yeah. So, I mean, I, or like the IG Live next week, man, you come on. Uh, yeah. I love hearing these things because, you know, this is the reality of trading, guys. You know, like you never, you know, that day that Roland woke up, I'm pretty sure he didn't realize he was going to make 40 grand. But that's life-changing kind of skill that he has. Okay, guys, so keep, you know, uh, notice that, man. It's like it took him four times to learn not to repeat the mistake. And now – you know, man, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's fucking like, he has PTSD. It's just like all of us, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so, so once again, take a look at my fucking, this is the loser of the day, but it, it wasn't nothing. It was like a break even loser. Oh, the CXDC bow. That was barely even a loser. You, I, dude. No, but, but this is my point to you. So these are the PTSD shit I get that saves me. This is the, the, what the, the fight or flight shit that responds. Cause I fucking like, I'm looking at this shit thing. Oh fuck. I'm going to get squeezed of $10 a share. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Correct. Correct. So, so when, so sometimes guys, if you fuck up, make sure it's break even or small ass loss. It's better. Don't be afraid to get faked out. I got faked out and I'm okay with it. I'm pissed, but you know what, man? 
If I keep doing this 10 out of 10 times, I'm safe. The one oh. time I don't fucking do this shit, I blow up. And, and Bal, you know what's funny about this? Because I used to do this all the time. Dude, how many times have we scaled from, say, 127 where you started in to 170? But when you oversize on that first one, bro, your mind will literally tell you, like, the house is going to burn down, earthquake 10.0. Take a look at this. It's going to change your reality. Seen, when, when have you seen me start a scale this fucking low? It's not even VWAP yet. Uh, honestly, dude, rare, but like when you oversize, you're guaranteed to lose because your I, mind is going to tell you these lies. I have, so much, I have so much fucking FOMO. I'm like, I'm going to nail this motherfucking bitch. Exactly. So I started fucking like, you know, my, my scales became bigger and bigger. And I had two accounts on this shit. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And, um, and um, guys, remember, remember, I say this all the time. If anything, me and Joe made this really famous, and this was one of the number one things we teach, that like if we go to KAVL for a second, when you, this is my favorite thing in trading to differentiate a long or a short. If you have a stock that's opening way under VWAP, guys, look at the deviation, way under VWAP by open. Where do you start in? It VWAP in outer lines. Now, on something like CXDC, which this is why I want to hit Val in the hand with a ruler right now, is when something plays a bunch of ping pong pre-market and opens kind of close, you wait for these outer resistance points. Like, this is where you wait. But like Val said, he got a little FOMO. He got a little, like, greedy. He got too excited too early. But he knows this is the line because I, I, outer I, lines I, when it I, opens near. I, the thing is, if I didn't oversize, I would have held. It, well, that's what I was saying, Val. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So I was way oversized, and I'm like, fuck, dude. Every little fucking movement up, I'm like, hurt. I'm like, dude, I, I, I have PTSD. I'm thinking this shit's going to be the next DWAC or fun, right? Because when you're oversized too early, bro, and you get a run like this when you're in at 127 to 170, your brain tells you it's going to $3 because your brain oh, plays fucking tricks on you. This is, a, this is a thing, man. It's like I was max sized too fast. Right. Um, whereas AGRI, I nailed that shit because I was nowhere even. I was half of my max I had located. I was only half the size. Right, my, correct. But small size made me more money because I'm able to hold these longer, wider um, wrists, wider stops, shit like that, guys. So make so if you're having if you're having problems trading, size down. I I guarantee you, it's cure for a lot of the fucking diseases. Yeah. I, I mean, the golden, the golden rule, if we have one, is, guys, follow the watch list. And if you're new, size down so you, so you can account for every bit of range that Alex is talking about. If he's talking about CDXC where it's 140 to 180, size in a way when you're new that you can do that. Or DWAC, 65 to 70, that's $5 of risk. But you got to understand the stock has so much range that if we go to it, you have to be sized down just as a general. You can't be sizing the exact same way you would in it maybe CXDC because it's so different in range, but again, size down so you can accommodate for a level of range which, in, which is in the move. And as Bao is saying, when you size down, I don't care how much you have to size down just to learn the patterns, you're going to get it over time because dude, I don't care if you use one or five shares per line. When you start to understand how stocks move, then you can get back to, let me size up, let me go a thousand shares, let me go 2000, let me go 10,000, whatever it is, but you got to gradually learn these freaking patterns, bro. It's not even about the money in the beginning. Do you know why Alex is sizing or a certain amount per line or sizing accordingly to each setup? Because he's done it so long. It's now reactionary. And you guys are still trying to learn this in the beginning. And when you force, like, unfortunately, we're all human and we do, like Bao did on CXDC today. Bro, this was a layup. This was a gimme that Bao fucked up only because he went in too much too early. If Bao would have started in at 140 or 150 with the size he did at 125, I know for a fact he would have added at 175. But your brain plays tricks on you when you break process. It does. Yeah. I, I was already sized up <laughs> more than I wanted. So yeah, yeah. So so I learned, course, I learned from this, and I sized down for the other plays. I'm green on everything else I traded except for this stock. But yeah, this is like this is. I want to show this as a good example of how to mitigate risk and what I did wrong. So because a lot of times people don't show you what the fuck you did wrong. So. Perfect example, bro. It, it's a perfect example. Okay, I take some questions. Me and then we uh. Sure, I think we glossed over a couple. Um, can you talk about GNUS sell the news trade? This wasn't on my radar today. Look at SY. Whoa, what the guys. fuck was that? Yes, I'm telling you, man. This is why I don't touch this shit. First of all, there's no um, there's no shorts. Who the fuck are they trapping? 
And yeah, I didn't even I didn't even pull up this chart one time today to be honest. Wow, geez. The stock the stock that washes a lot. You gotta be careful, man. The stock every time goes up and goes down. It's like I love these algos. I just could not find a fucking short. These algos that go up, they wash down. Those are the ones that that if you if you have patience for the outer lines, you you will nail. Yeah, and again, guys, again, it's not genus that's the example. It's any example like this. When a stock is up front side maybe a couple days ago, two days ago, gets destroyed from highs, when you have these dead cap bounces to outer lines, which you could, you know, directly put in the pivots to see, of course it failed at the outer pivot. Like, I didn't even have to pull them up to know. This is a low-hanging fruit, so you don't want to be shorting at 190. You want these kind of dead cap bounces. It's not just genus, dude. This I could pull up a chart that looks like this a million times over the last eight years this is a backside play they did it probably a desperate pump sell the news whatever and then boom like you get a sell-off and now it's completely dead but this is the shit that we teach man this is a low-hanging fruit day two day three it doesn't fucking matter back to outer lines into resistance it's dead it's like this is the this is what shorts should be focusing on broken ass names and well, outer lines uh, joe asked will that be a small account challenge a, a, small, small, a small dick. I, 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 hate, I hate that shit. I, why, why the fuck would anybody want to challenge themselves with a small account? <laughs> Dude, the only person that should ever like yeah, do a small really. account challenge is a trillionaire that doesn't give a fuck about money. Now he just has to prove to us that he can do it again. A fucking scammer. Scammer, scammer, scammer alert. You hear any? I, I tell you right now, anyone, anyone does a small account challenge in trading is a scammer. Of course. Show me one motherfucker that wants to trade with a small account. It's just, guys, a small account challenge, you know what that is, right? It's marketing bullshit. It's just for eyes. Why the fuck would you want to try to make less money if you're good at something? The thing is, dude, I, all these challenges are bullshit to, to scam you. These are coming from pumpers. They teach you nothing. They teach you that, join me, I can pump to the moon. So first step, guys, here, let me show you this fucking video, guys. A small dick challenge. <laughs> I'm challenged every day, Tosh. Don't make me sorry. Sad. I'm I'm getting heated. Dude. <laughs> Why would anybody want to be me? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> hey, check this out. Okay, check this out. Okay, check this fucking shit out. Let's see, bro. Watch this shit. Play this shit, Tosh. Where is it? Where is it? I know it's gonna be good. <laughs> what you got, man? Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Honestly, if I'm a lot, then go find less. And that's a fucking buy. Forever. <laughs> that's true, dude. dude, no one wants to study to be self-sufficient. All these gurus are fucking fighting their ass off right now to try to get you to join them. Small account this, small account that. Fuck that, dude. It's just, why would anyone do a small account challenge when you're a good trader, man? It's like you want to make less money. I mean, that think common it. sense, Dude, man. $35,000 account is a small account challenge for me and Alex, right? So we do that every day. So that's a realistic fucking small account challenge. Right? Common anyway. sense, man. Why does uh, Janet you? Yellen want to tax unrealized gains on billionaires? Because the government's greedy, man. Common sense, bro. Come on. Don't be a sheep. Don't uh, genus after the G, I'll do it. G N U S. I had Harry give a fucking alert today to remind me that there is a forward looking event to sell into. All these are scam companies. Okay. I forgot to put a fucking fantasy order at $2. I actually did, but you know what I did? At zombie hours, I canceled. I did a cancel all. And I forgot about it. So. These, these events from small cap companies, if you take a look, they, are, they run them up so that they can dump them, okay? So you have to be fucking careful on these news. Take a look at this fucking chart. I'm going to post G, so someone asked about this, okay? <laughs> Dude, that video is great. They run this shit up so that they can dump on the fucked up news, guys. Same fucking shit. Yep. Same thing with, uh, what was that? I-N-I I, 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 yesterday. The fucking... Uh, here, I think I'm gonna have it. Yesterday, the fucking CEO came on to came on to Benzenga to do a fucking interview, and that shit tanked. <laughs> Benzenga, Val, <laughs> you said that funny. Fuck, man, this is scam as shit. <laughs> Benzenga. Benzenga. Let me see where it is. Right here. Sell the news. Shit, man, we should put this in the archives. Did it come through? Uh. What is this? Oh, I-I-N-N? -N? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's read this to them. 
This is the same shit as genius. So there's a Benzenga fucking uh, interview. Uh, the and look what I did. I showed that shit at 847. Look where it went down to 708. Take a look at how fast it went down, dude. Fucking three minutes upon him entering into the fucking interview. And this is the screenshot of him at the Benzenga interview. Benzenga. <laughs> Benzenga yeah. <laughs> so they pumped it up. It ran all the way up because it's uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. So remember that, guys. Usually stocks sell off on news. Because they ran up already in anticipation. And the news better be fucking bombshell. Otherwise, that shit's coming back down. Yeah, seriously. I, and, and, and better be fucking getting bought up by fucking Amazon and, and Tesla. You know? <laughs> Dude, apparently, apparently, what's going on with SHIB token? I'm like, what kind of buy the rumor, sell the news is on that? Everybody keeps talking about this damn token. So that's why this rumor selling news. Same thing with GNS. I just fucked up because I forgot that I, I had the open order guys all day on the $2 line. It would have hit, but I canceled that shit. But anyways, that's not fucking matter, dude. These are, if you, but the thing is, if you're tracking these plays, you would have a order like that. But you know, man, these are little, so just learn this thing. I just don't want you guys to get caught up on these. Oh shit. The news is coming. Yeah. I have so many fucking friends do that, but broke on GNUS. They argue with me. This, this one good friend of mine, she, she was tell she got into a huge position at eight dollars. Eight dollars. Oh come on. Eight dollars. She's like, Val, you're stupid. I read all the reports. They're going to fucking launch in China. She's trying to tell me I'm stupid because they're going to China. Now you're talking about this one, I I N N. Oh no, G N U S. Oh G oh oh, this must have been a long time ago then. It was in at eight dollars, bro. Oh man, that's rough. This was last year. And, and guys, remember, it's like, it's like genius. It's like, oh, we got to know the news. We got to know the cat. It's today, man. The thing that I only care about on something like this is price action, dude. It's oh, way no, far it's from its highs. Outer oh, pivot number one, outer pivot number two, scale zone. Okay, so they, they, the, the, the problem with this is when the stock gets pumped up to $12, the, the, the chasers are like, shit, I wish I – because she made money. The, 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 when you blow up, usually you, you make a little money first, and you're pissed and you're greedy that you didn't load the boat. So she's like, please, please go down so I can load the boat. So, oh, start, so you know, it went up to 12 bucks and started to go back down to $8. So they add, they added all the way down. You know, this this is how, so this is why I say be very careful you long by a trader when, when the fucking shit breaks the VWAP. Get the fuck out. The last thing you want to do is hold this shit and pray. All right, anything else? Anything else, guys? Any qu- I, maybe we missed a question. Um... Well, there, oh, be good. Let's see. The only question is what I'm going to have for lunch. Oh, man, I know. I'm, I go, FOMO. I'm going back to this fucking fub place, man. I'm fucking dying right now. <laughs> now, I'm still trying to get over the fact that you were talking about degenerates earlier and selling your mother for a crack rock. Dude, that's what, dude, when, <laughs> you're, when you're fucking calling the broker and telling them to get rid of your max lady laws, you're a fucking degenerate, dude. <laughs> We've been there, dude. We've been there, dude. Oh, whoa, whoa. Mm. That's the candle, baby. What? what? It's too close. It's too close to the close to be shorting this, but that is the candle you look for in price action. Alex, did you have any shorts? I couldn't find that. I've been looking for that short all day long. Mm, That is sexy. You know what, man? This is the same thing. What's the VWAP? 739. Damn, that is a kill candle right there if I've ever seen one, man. That dude, is just dude, beautiful. Dude, there's no shorts on it to sustain the move. I've been looking for shorts all day, guys. I think it. Nice. Come on down, baby. Uh, but you know what, man? I'm telling you, you don't need to trade every single fucking play, guys. Pick, pick the top two or one and nail that one instead of trying to trade everything. Guys, we've got cops firefighters, teachers, traders, people of every single skill level, of any schedule, of any nationality, of any diversity, of any geographical location at MIC. You have no excuses. Our members are absolutely killing it these days. Um, and look, man, if, if you want to join, just text my line, man. Stop trying to do this shit yourself. House painter, Samuel, nice. The point is, guys, is if you want to supplement your income, eventually, hopefully get to the point where you have financial freedom, um, you got to take it. You got to take the leap forward and, and learn this language, but you got to work hard for it, man. We don't promise shit. You got to work for it. We have the best resources possible, the best team there is, and we're willing to help you and we're willing to put in the time if you put in the time. 
and but you gotta you gotta have a work ethic, man. So you gotta show up and and ask for help and do the right thing so you can understand this stuff. So I don't know if you guys have any closing questions, but this was a sick webinar, man. And like Alex said, 25% off annual and lifetime for non-members and our monthly members who want to upgrade. Just text me. Um, and also if a member I, I think, I, I think, hey, hey, I'll I'll sweeten the pot. The first five gets 50% off. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. Bow, are you sure you want to clear that with Alex real quick? <laughs> Whatever the, right. list of, whatever the list of prices, guys, we'll give you 50%. I'll, the first five only. So text us 50%. Only first five, and it will be timestamped. So <laughs> first five, all right, you got it. All right, guys, you have a great day. Uh, post your number. If you don't know how to reach Tosh, you don't know our website, then you should not be training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. We can't lay it down anymore than we already did. I, mean, I, I, I hate having to keep posting our fucking URL, but there are people who keep asking me, what's your website? Well, my website is what? Microsoft.com? I mean, what the fuck do you think? <laughs> What's your website for my investing club? <laughs> Our website is destroyfurus.com. <laughs> All right, guys, dude, this has been a hell of a webinar. Text my line if you have any questions. We'll All get right, to the first club. five. First five. You better hurry up. 50%. First All five. Right. First five. Then any after that is 25%. See you guys. See you about. We'll see you in after hours, buddy. <laughs>